Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's time to praise the name of the Lord. The church never tires to praise the Lord. Because our adoration is not simply to sing the lyrics of a song. Our adoration is what is the sign, the result of our experience with the Lord. In the church, when it praises the Lord, it praises out of joy, because we know that the day of our redemption is near. And what makes us always desire to be in the presence of the Lord. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite the brethren to stand up. We are going to firstly, before bringing the word, we are going to do an act, a prophetic action. Oh well, okay, translation. We are going to tonight. Mm -hmm. We are going tonight present a child to the Lord. And it is a responsibility of the parents that uh, taking this responsibility of um, raise their children. And we re have this respons responsibility with the, the Lord of guiding our children, of speaking about God to them give them instruction and pray for them and to be at their disposal to help to embrace to forgive and to never give up because when the Lord give us children he give us an inheritance and the best inheritance that one can leaves to his child is the assurance of salvation that he can have in Jesus the chance that he has of knowing the Lord, to knowing a God that is alive, and to know the works that the Lord has done among his church, and that the Lord can do in his life. This is the parents have this commitment, and we as a church will help in prayer and relaying the revelation of the Lord. And and really what what it has been our experience with the Lord so each one of us has a role each one tonight we are uh, taking a commitment with the Lord to help this couple and this family to guide tonight Leonardo let, let us call the mother Laura Evara the father Wicca and the little daughter Violetta and we also have the family they are all present the grandparents the grandparents the brother it's very good the uncle also Abuela the grandmother great-grandmother we're going to read a word which is in Luke Luke 2 from verse 21. Luke 2, 21. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now when the days of her purification uh, according to the law of Moses, were, were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male whom opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is uh, said in the law of the Lord, a pair of uh, turtle doves or two young pigeons. What the Lord wants of us is not a sacrifice, he wants a commitment and a pair of turtle doves and two pigeons is very simple but the Lord wants of us especially tonight from the parents
his commitment with God of guide, guiding Leonardo on the ways of the Lord. And now what we do when we do this, when we ask the Lord to protect and guide us, He does much better than us. The Lord knows how to take care of the things that we have. The Lord knows how to take care of our children better than every, any mother or father because our Lord never tires. Our Lord is not mute. Our Lord hears our prayers and He has power to help us and operate wonders. How many deliverance have we received? How many deliverance the Lord has given us every day? Deliverance that not even uh, we don't even realize because our God is the God of Israel. is a God of a God and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Let us pray therefore. Let me pick him up. Let's see. Don't have to come here. Amen. Glory to God. He's very calm, huh? Let's pray. Lord Father, we pray for the partners in the blood of Jesus. Lord, we praise the holy name for the blessing received, which was the birth of Leonardo in this home. He's been the inheritance of the Lord. Now we ask, Lord, that you protect him, that you be with him, cure him, give him uh, spiritual growth in his, your presence, and that he may never leave your ways, Lord. God, Father, give the, to the parents also a blessing of realization that they need to guide their child in your presence, reading the word, and praying for them, and also giving examples of a transformed life in the Jesus. We pray to you and present to the Lord, Leonardo, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah, <laughs> baptize me here, but no problem. <laughs> it's everything. It's fine. Let's go. I can take pictures. Every very good, Lel. Amen. Everything's fine. Afterwards, we will we will have time to you know, go. God, you went all the way down. What is the thing? Amen. And then that's all right. Don't worry about it. Let's go. You can go back to your uh, seat. Amen. Still standing. Let's open our Bibles in the book of Joel. Chapter 2. Joel. Chapter 2. Verse. Joel 2, verse 1. Who was here in the morning? You should have uh, the text already prepared. Joel is a little before Matthew. Joel after Genesis and before Revelations. <laughs> in the Bible, it is in the Bible. Chapter cha Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Amen. Who didn't bring a Bible, it's there. Amen. The, word of the, Lord, the, word, the Lord says the following. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Then let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. 
for it is at hand. Amen. Let us read together. Let's read. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, the Lord has given us a direction on those last months. And the direction of the Lord for its, his, its church is a very clear direction. It's a direction that is regarding to a position that church needs to have in order to meet Jesus. Throughout this entire year, we have learned about a gospel, which is the eternal gospel. It's not about the bankrupt gospel that we see in the world, not a gospel that is a, a bankrupt gospel, a gospel that is in death with the world. And death because it has not been preached. Gospel that is not um, being taken responsibility to its call, which is the preaching about the coming of the Lord Jesus. They preach about everything else. They speak of everything else, all the other subjects. But today we have seen the church and generally speaking what is the most important what the church on the last days needed to speak which is the coming of the Lord Jesus is not being preached the primitive church had a mission the Holy Spirit had been poured out to the primitive church it was preparing the primitive church for one message what was that message? Jesus died, but he resurrected and he is alive among his people. And now the church of our days, which is called the church of the near, which is the church of the last days, it also has a mission. And our message is the following. Jesus is coming. Maranatha, Lord, come Jesus. Joe here, he was living the moment that was very difficult and in the life of Israel. A moment in which there was a lot of defeat. A moment in which the people was um, abandoning the presence of the Lord. The people was not paying attention to the things that they were supposed to do. And there was a terrible moment in the life of Israel. But now the Lord calls Joel, the prophet Joel, and he sends a message through Joel. Joel, you're going to have to do the following. In the midst of the people, in, the, in, in this place where you're living, you tell them with loud voice, blow the trumpets in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. My brethren, the blowing of the trumpet in Zion, the blowing of the trumpet for Israel was something that was very important. When the people left Egypt, thousands of people, 400 years, they have been slaved in Egypt, thousands of people were born there from a small family. So now when they left, 
because the Lord had delivered the people from the claws of the Pharaoh. Uh, the Red Sea was open. God was blessing thousands of people with these animals. So the Lord gave instruction to Moses so that the people would know what to do, when to do, what was the perfect time for them to do. They had to blow a trumpet. So the trumpets, they were blown. And the sound that came out from the trumpet was a sign for something. They would blow the trumpet in order to set up the tent of the tabernacle. And there was another uh, trumpet that was sounded in order to disassemble the tabernacle. There was another sound that was blown in order for the people to walk. There was another sound that was blown in order to make people stop. There were other sounds that were blown in order to to conclaim the people for the celebration. So everything that was done in order for everybody to hear, they had to blow the trumpet. Today we have uh, WhatsApp here. <laughs> Everything today sent to WhatsApp. Everybody knows, right? You don't do that, right? At the time, they didn't have it. So the way for Moses, for the people to know what was going on, we imagine thousands and thousands of people walking on the desert. If we were if you had to speak from mouth to mouth, it would take weeks, months for that command to get to the last person. So instead they would blow the trumpet. And the people then would follow the command of that sound. So it is interesting that it was not just any instrument. The trumpet was made out of the horn of the goat was called shofar. And in order to make a shofar, in order to make this instrument used to play the sound, an animal had to be sacrificed. The horn was removed and was placed on a fire. And on the fire there, it, everything was, all the impurity, and whatever was left of skin, of flesh, everything was removed. And there was a lot of work done so throughout the time the chauffeur would after a period of time the chauffeur would be made so my brother this instrument prophetically speaking it represents the person of the Lord Jesus who is the Lamb of God that removes sin from the world so the people in order to understand the sounding of the trumpet, the sounding of the shofar. The people needed to be linked to the death of the Lamb. The people needed to identify with the death of the Lamb, with the shofar, which was brought to the fire. It was worked. It all speaks of the person, the Lord Jesus, that went through the trials, that overcame all things, that in no moment stepped back but he was allowed to be to move forward because of the commitment he had made with the father jesus in no moment he rejected being the man the element of connection and salvation of men and today we as a church we also have this commitment with the lord we also have this mission with the lord in the same way that Joel gathered the people in order to play the trumpet in Zion, the church also in our days has a commitment. The church has a, is be, uh, the trumpet is being sounded in our days. In the same way it was sounded in Zion, it cannot be blown uh, just anywhere. It has to be blown in Zion. The trumpet of the Lord is blown inside of the church. 
this is the place where the Lord is speaking. This is the place where the Lord is conclaiming people. This is where the Lord is revealing Himself to men. This is the place where we have been receiving all the direction from the Lord. And it's being blown every day. It was blown here today many times. The praises of the children, the trumpet was blown. When we knelt down to begin the service, the trumpet was blown. When the brother stood up to pray and thank the Lord, the trumpet was blown. When we did a presentation of Leonardo, the trumpet was blown. The proclamation that Jesus is coming is being proclaimed every day. When we see the book of Revelations, we'll see that the trumpet of the Lord has our, have already been blown. Three trumpets have already been blown to the world, to the church of the Lord. If we see in Revelations 8, we see that three trumpets have already been blown. The first was about the green, the nature. This we all we didn't even speak of the Bible. If we see today what is going on in the world, the science, the studies, everything is being confirmed that the first trumpet has already been blown. The green is vanishing. The nature every day more and more diminishes the forests the clean air this is all a consequence of the blowing the first trumpet that nobody heard the world didn't hear it but who is in Zion who is in the church who is connected to the sacrifice of Jesus and that cross of Calvary who is hearing the direction from the Lord knows that the trumpet was blown we only confirm this and the books and the studies that have been done. And the second trumpet was also blown. It, w it hit the oceans, the sea, the fish, all the animals, not all, but some animals there are in the oceans. That have been proven. The fish, they're vanishing. The species, they're going extinct. Nobody heard, but the church heard. By faith, we've heard because we know the word of the Lord. We know the blowing of the shofar. We know what the Lord is doing. We know that the project of, of the Lord to save men will happen. And no one will prevent it. And the third trumpet oh, was also blown, the rivers. The rivers that were affected, the fresh water, it becomes bitter, right? We see this constantly. The rivers being contaminated, the rivers becoming dirty, all of it. But the church now awaits for the sounding of the last trumpet for the church which will be the moment in, we, in which we will be raptured we will be the moment in which we will leave this place and we will meet the Lord forever the fifth trumpet is different the church will no longer be here we will be already in the glory with the Lord and the fifth trumpet is completely different because it it's not going to affect anything that is related to the green, the nature of the or the ecosystem, but it will go against men. The fifth trumpet is very clear, it speaks of the following. I'm sorry for those that inhabit the earth because when the trumpet was blown, the fifth trumpet is blown if we, if we what have we seen what we have been following on the newspapers the lack of peace wars the pains the, 
the diseases, the plagues, everything that we see today, it does not compare to what is going to happen after the blowing of the, l the fifth trumpet. But church, but the church will no longer be here. And I hope that each one of us may already be uh, on the arms of the Lord. But it is interesting that so before that it happens, this text as it comes to our days, blow the trumpet to Zion. The church does this. It's not in anywhere else, anywhere. Our service, our adoration to the Lord, is not done just anywhere. Because this is the place where the Lord is present. We are not ador adoring a man, a leader. No, a man, no. We are adoring a God that is alive. A God that looks at us with His eyes of mercy. God that stretches His hands to bless us, to give us direction, and to show us the way. That's the place in the presence of the Lord. This is such a simple place. A few seats, a few benches, but here is the place where the Lord manifests. This is the place where we are renewed. This is the place where joy is given to us. This is the place where the Lord transforms hearts. This is where the Lord baptizes us. This is where the Lord brings joy to our hearts. This is the place where the Lord is giving us the assurance that our names are written in the book of life. Blow the trumpet in Zion and plead with loud voice in my holy mouth. We have a plea. We have a plea to the Lord. It is in the holy mountain. Because that's the place that we want to go. In the holy mountain of the Lord. We only desire to be in the holy mountain of the Lord. Because the higher we go, the closer we will be to God. The higher we climb, the higher we plead to the Lord, the more we plead to the Lord, climbing the holy mount of the Lord, closer we will be the, to the Lord. Fear all the people of the world. My brethren, the world trembles. The man is perturbed. The man is away from the Lord, is losing his sleep, losing his peace, lose his security, he's losing his mind sometimes. We see in the world this, man afraid, one sh man shaking, a lost, because the more the church blows the trumpet, the more the church proclaims the coming of the Lord Jesus, the more the faithful church is speaking of a God that is coming. Those that don't have the com commitment with the Lord, they are afraid. They're shivering because they know that there is a judgment from the part of the Lord upon those that are away from the Lord. Because the same blessing that will be for the church, the same judgment of eternal life that will be for the church, will also be the judgment of death to those that are away from the Lord. Man shivers because the soul that the Lord gave him when he was created, when he was born, this soul it desires, it wants to go back to the Creator. And when he is away from the Lord, away from God, without having fellowship with the Lord, without hearing the word of the Lord, without being connected to Jesus, without being connected with the salvation of the Lord Jesus, this soul knows its destiny. That's why there is such a fear, this insecurity, this lack of peace. That's why we see out there so many suicides, so many people depressed, so many people taking their own lives, so many people lost, unhappy about their lives, without having a reason to leave. Why? Because they are not connected to Jesus. And the more the church preaches, the more the church proclaims the coming of Jesus, the more the trumpet is blown, the more the trumpet pro is proclaims, the more these people know that the, 
day of the Lord is coming. Because the day of the Lord is coming and it's near. My brother, our joy is this day. And to know that this day is near. But you may tell, tell well, I always heard that Jesus is coming. For 2,000 years, people keep saying that Jesus is coming. But the rapture of the church is going to be an uh, event. It may take also 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 100. It doesn't matter. We don't know the day in which Jesus is coming. We cannot affirm or guarantee. Only God knows. But we know of one thing. Your day is coming near. Whether you like it or not, your end is already set. Whether you like it or not, you may not may agree or may disagree with what is the prophecy of God and the word of God. You may even run away of the greatest moment that was the the church awaits. But an individual event, you will have to face your alone, which is the day of our death. The day in which you face the greatest of your enemies, which is the death of men. You have to face it alone if you are away from God. If you're, if you, but if you are connected to Jesus, you will simply die to this life, that this earthly life. But you will inherit, you will inherit uh, eternal life in the presence of the Lord. So, my brethren, may this word serve as uh, awakening for you so that this word may be a proclamation from the part of the Lord so that from this point on we may be connected to the sounding of the trumpet of the commandments the Lord has given us the word of the Lord so that this word may remain in your heart and that you may be prepared for a great celebration which is the proclamation that we wait is the marriage of the the Lamb in which we will be forever in the presence of the Lord eating with the Lord and singing an eternal song of duration, blessed be the name of the Lord I ask you that you close your eyes and that tonight you may meditate on this word and that the Lord may speak greatly to your heart and that you may leave this place sure that you can also receive tonight salvation with Jesus if you're shivering if you're confused if you're afraid pray to the Lord say Lord may my life be based in Jesus because man will be shaken when Jesus comes we all are going to have to recognize that Jesus came and he took the church, faithful church, to be forever on his arms. Let us hear a song. You know, close your eyes and speak with the Lord, asking the Lord for an experience, asking the Lord that he make, that, so that he can make a landmark in your life, to, that this may live this place with the blessing of the Lord.
Holy Holy is the name of the Lord. Please, I invite the church to stand up. Praise to Jesus. Amen. Glory to Jesus. I'm going to have a word of adoration to the name of the Lord. 
Lord, we exalt your name. We praise you, Lord. Because, Lord, there's no other place better than to be in your house. Giving you all our gratitude of all our worship because you are the only one that is worthy of our gratitude, Lord. Because beautiful deeds you have done among your people. It's wonderful, the deeds of the Lord among the church. We have no words, Lord. We don't have enough words to express so great love for you. But we confess with our lips that the best thing is to serve you. The best thing is to be dependent on you. The best thing is to be in your house. The best thing is to give you our gratitude. Our tears. Our tears, they fall because they're tears of gratitude. Because it's so good, Lord, to be a part of your kingdom. So great, Lord, to be a part of this wonderful church that one day you have revealed to us how wonderful God is to be in the house. We also praise the Lord for the lives that you have moved, Lord. Because we know that everyone that is here was because you brought them here so that they would be here tonight participating in this uh, spiritual celebration in your presence. We praise you and honor you in the name of Jesus. Amen. My brethren, closing the service, when we prayed for the service, for the service, the Lord has given us spiritual gifts. And one of the spiritual gifts, the Lord has shown a man that is being dizzy because of his constant, uh, his excessive concern with the things of this world. He's so worried, perturbed, with his daily life, with his work, with his daily commitments, and it has brought some discomfort to him. But tonight the Lord wants him to have an understanding that the Lord can give tranquility, health, physical health, and much more spiritual health to you. So place everything on God's altar. The concern with concern with life we all have. We have bills to pay, credit cards, right? What the wife wants to spend, everybody has it. But trust in the Lord. The Lord will open the doors. The Lord can operate mildly. If you don't cut it down, God can also transform, right? What is important is that we know one thing. What we need is an experience with the Lord. Trust in Him. And He will do all things. Trust in the Lord. Do a test. And you will see how God can give you this tranquility, this peace that the world doesn't have to give you. But Jesus has. And tonight He says, My peace I give you. Take this to you, to your home, this peace with Jesus in your life, and you see how the preoccupations, everything will pass. The Lord has also shown another vision, another woman that entered here, and the Lord has also given her another opportunity for her to receive from the Lord salvation. Lord never looked at your past. You need to forget about your past. Lord, God forgets, God forgives and forgets, but you also need to forget what the Lord wants from you is that you accept salvation in Jesus and that you are a new creature, allow the Holy Spirit to operate in your life, allow God to transform your life, and you will see that you will also can also be eternal. The Lord has eternity for you. This woman that entered here, she needed this blessing and also to give herself up to the Lord and having God as the King and Savior of her life. The Lord also spoke of a man and woman that have been seeking the Lord in a way that is different than the way that was explained in the Word of the Lord. They want 
to seek the Lord, have a closeness with the Lord, based on images and uh, idolatry, things that they seek, their own effort, uh, that they want to be good, a good person and achieve a closeness with God by that, but n none of this works. The only way for you to come close to the Lord is Jesus. Jesus, the, the only one that in intermediates man with God. There's nothing else. There's no other way for you to come to God and to be heard by God and to have your prayer answered by God, but through Jesus. He said, he, he, he himself said, whatever you ask to the Father, in my name, the Father will give. So we need to leave this this uh, what you learn from tradition what you zeal for you need to understand the word better because the word is very clear there is no doubt regarding this salvation is only in Jesus Amen let us close our eyes let's pray closing the service and if after prayer you, f you still need assistance we are here at your disposal we have deacons, workers, brethren they have made himself available to pray to the Lord and ask for the means, spiritual means, to pray f to the Lord and the Lord will bless your life. If you need a prayer, stay seated where you are, raise your hand and s somebody will go towards you. Lord, we want tonight, praise your name and ask that you may receive our worship, the service in adoration to your name and that you may turn into blessings to each one here present even those that are here representing their homes their family members that were not able to be here that your spirit tonight may reach them and that your word also may be transmitted to them so that they may have also an opportunity to meet this same Savior that once we met. Give us a blessing so that we may have a week of victory in your presence and that we may have an administration of your angels on our behalf, operating, breaking the barriers, giving you, Lord, victories in your presence. Receive our worship. It's a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. We want to thank the ones that visit us, the ones that accepted the invitation. And want to say that you are very welcome and that we're always here on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and Thursday also 8 p.m. Saturday and Sundays 7.30 p.m. and also Sunday at 10.30 in the morning and we wish everyone the peace of the Lord.